Joining me now to discuss Money Map Press Chief Technical Strategist DR Barton, Bonson Group Managing Partner and Founder David Bonson, and Bell Point Chief Strategist David Nelson. David, let me start with you. Sure. Uh, we were up 115 points early. Hopes China stimulus got us going. Then JP Morgan reported, then Wells Fargo reported, then Delta reported. It looked like it was going to be an ugly day, and we found a way to come back. Uh, you know, I think this is a real interesting session for I, the I think it's a great session, and it takes on to, we've had other, you know, so far this year, we survived a, a kidney punch from Apple. And I think today in particular, you know, coming up today on the heels of the largest bank in the United States, you know, Pretty big miss for J.P. Morgan. They've had 15 quarters in a row where they beat. They missed pretty big time here. I think it speaks to the resilience of this market and, and it probably says that a lot of the bad news is really in the rear of a mirror. You know, David Bonson, uh, not unlike yesterday's city, you would have thought maybe at 930 it was going to be down a couple, maybe 2 percent. Wouldn't have been unusual for what we heard. Uh, it ended up being uh, the strongest stock in the market. The only sector that was up yesterday were the financials. So it, it feels interesting here that maybe companies can talk their way out of, out of some of this stuff. <laughs> Yeah, I think in this case of J.P. Morgan, it's more than just talking the way out, though. The news just simply wasn't that bad, other than a bad headline miss on earnings. But you look under the hood, we're big J.P. Morgan holders. And the fact of the matter was, it was entirely, and I mean entirely, just bond trading revenue down in December. So that FICC, the fixed income sure. business, is down, but net interest margin was up, loan growth was up, their investment banking business was up dramatically. Under the hood, it's sort of a transitory development. Markets are not dumb. They're not dumb, but uh, you know this. Uh, in another time or place, if this were maybe the third, the, you know, a quarter ago, David, I think the reaction might have been somewhat different. Yeah, I mean, I agree. I think that the, the sentiment was bad enough then that they were looking for an excuse to sell off. Right, right. But in this particular case, I think fundamentally there's enough good news in there. And you got to remember, too, the valuations were coming from. J.P. Morgan had already priced in plenty of bad news. Now, J.P. was only down 6% last year. Other financials were down 15, 20, 25%. J.P. Uh, Goldman, Goldman Sachs was an unmitigated disaster Absolutely. last year. Yeah, I, th I, I, I agree with David that I think it wasn't just uh, the bank. I think with City yesterday, BAC had a big recovery today. We're going to hear from Goldman later this week. And I think the beaten down financials are, I'm, I'm with, with David again, a good place to be looking this year. Are you concerned about the economic backdrop right now, David? I, I am concerned to the extent that if the Fed were to continue pulling liquidity out of the marketplace, out of the economy, not referring to the rate level, by the way, referring to their balance sheet. If they were to continue going at $50 billion a month all year, which I'm now convinced they're not going to do, that would become an economic backdrop of concern. It still has to come in, though. It I mean, has to come in. They, they have to, to slow down, down the pace. 10 to 20 billion a month they were doing for a year the market didn't And I agree with that. I think that's really the billion. key is, is stretching this out a lot longer than they originally had anticipated. That, that's right. Yeah, but Morgan I also Stanley. think the other part of the economic backdrop, though, is the trade war. I think the market has a lot of confidence is going to be worked out. I have a lot of confidence is going to be worked out. If we're wrong, then the economic backdrop changes dramatically. Esther George is coming out moments ago also. Uh, she's a, a, a hawk. Uh, and she, she also used the magic word of patience. So everyone's on board with respect to the Federal Reserve. Uh, but when you do get these economic data points, you wonder, could there be something else going on that we should be concerned about? Uh, China, are, do you feel like just from everything you've seen that there is more... Uh, a sense of urgency on their side to get this thing resolved. I, I do, and yet I will be careful to say that I don't buy into that idea that because it's hurting them more, it's okay if it hurts us as well. I don't think hmm. the Trump administration can take a bad bruise just because China's getting a broken leg. The, the fact of the matter is that I don't believe we have a choice but to resolve it, and I happen to believe that they are making progress. I don't think there was much to that comment, that report out of Lighthizer. All the indications coming back or that they're making progress. Right. The fact of the matter is that we don't have a choice, okay? The economic growth that we have to have and the business investment we have to regenerate. That they have to have as well as, as well. well. They, they do as well, but we're not going to go down a policy that says, it's okay, we'll blow both of us up, but they'll blow up worse than us. He has told the world that he expects to be preeminent right now, right around the corner. Unlike his predecessor said, be quiet, shut up, and do this thing, do this quietly. But we've also said we're going to have 3% GDP growth. If we end up at 1.5 GDP growth, if we start getting less than Obama era, a GDP growth, that's a disaster. The president's not going to let it happen. They're going to get a deal done. A tweet from you uh, in L.A. Uh, you're saying, listen, you know, the airport was pretty empty, pretty smooth. Uh, because we're hearing the horror stories, and the way it's being composed in the mainstream media is 
how it's impacting or influencing regular folks, not on the economic side, because it's hard to make that argument, but that somehow we're all impacted in a negative way. Maybe we wait an extra half an hour to get on the plane. Yeah, so I have two kind of perspectives that I care about is what are Americans actually seeing and feeling, and then from an investor and market standpoint, what I don't care about is what they're saying on the Beltway and mainstream media's take on it. The first two, I think, find this to be a total non-event. There is no real impact taking place right now. Now, Brian's right, and I think this speaks to what Jamie Dimon said. There's a mathematical sense in which reduced government spending comes out of the input to GDP. Sure. So you just simply formulaically could have some number, and it just comes back around. It's hard to imagine more. it would dramatically offset no. uh, consumer spending, uh, business investment, and those other things. I don't things, think the so. consumer is even aware it's happening. I don't think the consumer cares one bit. The tweet you referenced, I was at LAX last night flying out to New York. It wasn't just that it wasn't bad. It was better than I've ever seen it. I've flown out to New York almost 300 times in the last 20 years. It was the least lines and commotion right. I've ever seen. I just think it's a much to do about Let nothing. Let me ask you about what I'm. one thing that bothers me, but I don't understand it, uh, the CLOs. CLOs, mm-hmm. I feel like... I feel like every major economic crash we've had, uh, you know, throughout my time on Wall Street has been associated with the abuse of uh, some instrument, junk bonds, collateralized debt obligations, those kind of things. CLO seems to be the sort of thing that I'm hearing about. There's a record amount of them done last year. It's a money-making thing, a can't-miss thing. Those raise red flags for me. Yeah, well, first of all, every crash that's happened in about 500 years has come down to some excess of debt, some abuse of debt. So that you're exactly right. In the past, there's been spiraling junk bond excess. We know the mortgage story. CLOs are a bit different in that they don't have to be purchased by regular investors and levered up. The fact of the matter is there's just a lot more companies borrowing a lot lot more money, and this is a different instrument they're doing it through. The Fed put $4 trillion of liquidity into the economy right. post-financial crisis. How much is corporate debt, which includes CLOs, levered loans, high yield, how much has it gone up? $4 trillion. They wanted that reflation in the corporate economy, and they got it. I think that the proper stewardship of that money going forward is the question. There is not an excess of leverage in the economy really? right now, okay. but they're up against those limits, and that, and that is why they're so concerned about the Fed pulling away the punch bowl.